Hi, thank you for having us. We're, uh, we're here today at the Startup Bootcamp Mumbai Fintech 2017 Demo Day. And here we have with us is Vivek Belgavi from PwC, the lead partner in Fintech. Yeah. So Vivek, I'd like to ask you a question. What do you see as the role of accelerators in this, uh, specifically in this Fintech ecosystem? Sure. Then, but first of all, let me, let me just say how excited I am to be here. I can't believe it was just eight months back that we kicked, kicked this off, right? So it, and the time really flew by. Uh, having said that, I, having been part of this journey and the arc, and if I look at some of our cohort members around eight months back, it's, it's pretty amazing as to how they have matured through the whole journey. Uh, the whole story has come together. Uh, it has it has mixed expectations, if I may, right? So I mean, a uh, lot of participants in India haven't yet seen accelerators completely in action and complete the whole arc. Uh, so I think I remember the first impressions were: Are these folks too raw? Uh, are the ideas well formed? Are they distinctive? So on and so forth. Uh, but I, I do think the the biggest advantage that I've seen is how the exposure they have got. Uh, all the partners of the Startup Bootcamp here in India, including PwC, from a consulting perspective, we have had a couple of banks like ICICI and Arup Ratnakar coming and giving the banking domain. We had uh, Capital First from an NDFC perspective. We had our legal partners. With that kind of an exposure, in addition to Adrian, you and the team, uh, with prior experience of guiding them and making the right choices, if I have to say, probably allowing a cohort to give guidance for them to take the right choices in this journey uh, is the biggest difference that I see. And I, I still think they have a lot of distance to go, uh, but it's almost like a finishing school, uh, if I may. Uh, their whole ideas have really got, they have landed well. Uh, they, are, they are a lot more active into the realities of the market now. They have a lot more clearer path of how they want to progress. So yeah, all in all, I think accelerators do play an important role in, uh, I, won't, I won't recommend it for everyone, but this definitely, as a part of the ecosystem, they play an important role in, in grooming a talent and ensuring probably there might be a higher hit rate or success rate of uh, some of the innovation they're trying to bring in. So Startup Bootcamp is different than most accelerators, uh, especially here in India. We're a high-touch accelerator. Yeah, yeah. We work uh, side by side with the startups. Yeah. Have you noticed that that is unique to Startup Bootcamp or have you noticed that that is, or is that even an, a trend that's happening more and more in India? No, I do think it is unique uh, from that perspective. Uh, so for many of the other similar accelerators that we have seen, uh, there isn't as much of a, let's say, a dedicated core team with a global network which is doing it full time. So I think, yeah, so to that extent, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly different model. Probably the closest ones which will come to this model could be the one which are associated with universities and colleges and campuses, right? Uh, but they are few and far in between and, and they, I don't think they will match up to the scale. Uh, but yeah, I mean that would be the closest model in my mind and I think that, has a, that definitely has a big bearing on this. Yeah. Now tell me, one of the trends in the US has been that the startups six years ago were early, early stage. Yeah. Now startups that have upwards of six million in revenue are joining accelerators. Mm -hmm. Do you see that trend happening here in India? I think it will be good. So as it's it's almost like a, a pyramid of sorts of that industry, right? So right now, uh, the the fintechs in India, which are in Series B and Series C and above, are only a handful, right? So uh, large in the payment space that we have seen, uh, a couple of them in tech-led, the analytics kind of spaces. Uh, but the broad basing we haven't yet seen, right? So there are only few in each bucket that we look at it. Uh, with initiatives like these, uh, you would see, and, and uh, also the broader ecosystem, now, as you see more folks coming into the, the seed round, and then a greater percentage of them moving into Series A and following the Series B, uh, you would see that more folks at slightly more mature stages coming in, but probably the theme then will also evolve. I think it needs to evolve, right? So it needs to get into some kind of a growth story at that point in time, uh, in a, as opposed to kind of a seed or the setting up story, right? So probably the, the narrative has to change. Uh, but I think it is a inevitable trend, provided, uh, provided the funding climate is positive. Yeah. Uh, the industry is, uh, the industry atmosphere is clement. Right now it is. Uh, nearly every, most of the incumbents have, are very, very open uh, to collaborating. We recently did our FinTech, Global FinTech Survey. One of the things which came out of it was that collaboration is increasing. 
we are working with a couple of banks ourselves. A uh, couple of banks are running their own programs. So I think with that support system, the government of India is playing a big role. Uh, there is a Startup India campaign which is being run. Individual ministries are open up to innovation and wide area of topics. Right? So I think all these are, uh, are multiple drivers. The tailwinds are right, I think, in this point. So one final question. As, and it follows from what you just said. What do you believe is the single weakest link in the fintech ecosystem here in India? That's here in Mumbai. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting one. I would think, uh, and I'm not sure, and probably I'll, I'll get you to resonate cause, uh, with, with your experience in US and other places, right? I almost think probably patience. Yeah? So to, to create a, a class product, from beginning to end, from a, from a conception to execution, requires a fair bit of patience and almost a tunnel vision. To sustain a tunnel vision for a longish period of time, under the circumstance where the resources are constrained, uh, is a challenge, but it is almost a must-have, right? So if you want to create, a, let's say, a, the next global unicorn out of India, uh, you would need that support system and patience. It should not become a funding and a valuation story. Uh, at some level, uh, incubators and accelerators uh, like Startup Bootcamp can play a big role in that. It almost give up like a safe harbor of sorts, uh, allow people to make mistakes, learn quickly, but maintain the tunnel vision, not get dissipated with the market. Uh, so I think that, if you ask me, is would be my my take. I'm not sure what, what how do you how, what do you feel about that? Yeah, I actually along the lines of patience, I uh, I have found. Uh, that here in India, the command and control structure within mm -hmm. corporations is the single most uh, weakening factor in allowing innovation and startups to, to rise. Now, that being said, these big corporations run very well because of the command and control yeah. structure. Yeah. And I would argue that uh, accelerators, and especially our accelerator, because we're industry focused, yeah really helps in uh, providing that, breaking down that wall specifically and con making that connection. Sure. So I would say India is on its way, but I would have to say that's the biggest, the biggest weak link that I've seen fair. is the lack of uh, ability even, yeah. simply structural ability to get startups in the, in the door with yeah. corporates. Yeah. Although I think just to, just to respond to this, uh, there are now disruptors being created within our banks. Mm -hmm. uh, so the top five banks I could think of, uh, I know extremely senior level folks who have been given mandate to almost run a separate innovation shop in the larger shop. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also need help of, in fact, the banks which are part of this program as well, they are running those shops. Uh, they are trying to see how they can leverage like a startup bootcamp venture use that as a channel to, to drive change within the organization. Uh, so the very fact that they have been set up is a signaling that at yeah. a board level, uh, the, it is, they are quite serious to bring about this change. Uh, but it's, it's a measured move, right? So at the same time, you can't shake up the existing business, drive something. And that answer, I don't think people have found yet. How do you disrupt yet get your core business moving? Right. right? So I think that's a, that's a puzzle which has not been cracked. Uh, but the green shoots of, of intent are there. Uh, yeah. so, the, so there are specific stakeholder groups in nearly every bank I can think of that we are, we are closely in touch with and engaging with who understand this. But you're right, it is, they still have miles to go. Yeah. Uh, the, the challenge, like if you ask an average digital head or innovation head within a bank today, would be to say, well, I have explored this market. I am a convert, I believe in this, help me help me convince my stakeholders of an ROI of for doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's the next challenge for all of us to say, yeah, they're ready, ready to take the bet, but show them the results coming out of it. And probably that'll take a little bit more time, but that's a real challenge in front of us right now. Beck, thank you so much. Always a pleasure, Adrian. Good to have you. Good to, good to talk to you as well. Cheers.